Spring Boot provides a very flexible way of reading and resolving property files. In this video, we will see how to reference property file values using the add value annotation. Next, we will see how to create a POJO with add property source annotation to refer to the property files. We will then inject this class to refer to property values. This allows for a type safe configuration, which we will see. Next, we will move the properties to an external file and see how to refer to it. We will see how to read multiple external property files and how Spring resolves the conflict when the same property name is present in more than one file. Lastly, we will see the validations we can put on the property values like not empty, etc. to ensure a more robust check process. Here I have Spring Tool Suite running on my machine, which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let's create a new project by clicking File, New, Other, Spring Boot, Spring Starter Project and call it Spring Boot Properties. Click Next. Let's choose from the web node web. Click Finish. So here under Source Main Resources is our application.properties file, which we are most familiar with. Let me paste a few values in here. So there are some key value pairs like name, version, etc. Then we have properties which go multi-level like myapp.language and myapp.build and mail.host, etc. Here is an array of zip codes. I just wanted to show you some representative values to cover possible complexities. And here is our main class. Let's extend it to implement command line runner, import it, add unimplemented methods. So upon the project startup, the run method will be executed. Let's using the add value annotation access the myapp.language property and tie it to the string lang variable. Fix the imports. Inside the main method, let us put a system.out.println to output the language. Let's run this project by right clicking and choosing run as Spring Boot application. And we see that Spring Boot was able to read the properties and resolve it. Now, if we have to refer to more properties, we have to keep adding multiple value annotations. Instead, let us see another better way. Let's create a POJO or plain Java object to refer to the properties. So right click and choose new class. Call it my properties. Mark it as a component for component scanning with the add configuration property and annotation for reading external configuration. And using the property source, indicate the source of properties. So here, asking it to look in the class path and look for application.properties file. Let's fix the imports. Now, let us define the type safe configuration by indicating the data type we expect of these properties. So string name, version, boolean messaging used. Now, if the value is not true or false or zero or one, then Spring Boot will error for this variable. So providing us a type safe way of accessing this variable. Now here we have some nested key value pairs. So the way we deal with them is to create static objects for my app and mail. So in our class, let's create a variable my app exactly as it's named in the property file with a class, let's say my app and another one as mail. Next, let's create these static classes. First, for my app, put the properties language and build here. Let's generate getters and setters for these properties. Fix the case of the class. Similarly, let us create a static mail class, put the properties string host, int port, string protocol, generate getters and setters. And now, generate getters and setters for the variables in the my properties class. Note the hint to add the Spring Boot configuration processor, which helps in generating configuration metadata. Let's add this. And here it is added to the POM file. We also have an integer array of zips. 
Let's create a property here to correspond with that. Generate its getters and setters. Next, let's go to our main class, comment the value annotation and variable as we will get it now from the class, which we will auto wire. Let's call it my props. So now we obtain lang as my props dot get my app dot get language name as my props dot get name and the zip array as my props dot get zip and the first element. Let's relaunch this app and here we see the values correctly being retrieved. We can move these properties to an external file. So let's cut it from here, go to our folder, create a new document, call it my.properties and paste these values here. Now in our property source, we will point to this file as file colon and its full path. Let's run this project again and it can resolve the external file and get the properties just fine. Now we can have Spring Boot look at multiple property files. So let's go to the folder and create another properties file, call it b.properties. Copy and paste the properties here. Let's modify a couple of properties. Let's say the first zip and the name indicating it is from b. Now we can have the property source look at multiple files with the value option indicating the multiple files. If there are common properties, then the property in the last file wins. So let's run it again and as expected, the common property is pulled from the second file. Now both files do not need to have all the values. So from b.properties, let's remove the zips and from my.properties, let's remove the name. The base POJO behind the property source will pick values from the appropriate files, overriding them based on the order and present us with a common aggregated class to pull it from. Now if we run it again, we see that it pulled the properties from appropriate classes and shows them over here. This time, since there were no zips in b.properties, it got it from my.properties. Finally, let us see how Spring Boot allows us to add validations to our properties. Since we added Spring Boot Starter Web, so let us say we add the add not empty annotation to the name property indicating it cannot be left empty. Let's import it. There are several other validation annotations like add min and add max for numeric values, add pattern, etc. Please look at documentation for a complete list. Put the add validated annotation to indicate to Spring to validate this bean. Let's go to our property file and make the name null. Relaunch the app and this time we see the error indicating binding error to the property. So Spring Boot provides us a convenient way to externalize properties, resolve a hierarchy of property sources along with providing a type safe and validated configuration. Thanks for watching.